Hi Legends, welcome back. I'm Rebecca. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be tier ranking every single movie that I watched this year in 2022. It was a bit more than 100 but some of them were rewatches, so we cut them out. It's still 100 for movies, we're going to get through them all. But before we start, if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe, check me out on my socials and join the Patreon if you want to. We have five tiers, one, two, three, four, we have five tiers. The first one is I want to give birth to this movie, aka it's just that good. There's a few of those. Then we have Grand. Next up we have Meh. You know, it's not bad, it's not good, it's just Meh. Could have been more, but it wasn't. Was this necessary might be one of my favourite categories because, you know, you just watch a movie and you're like, did they have to do that? Why? That's that category. And finally, the worst category, give me back those hours. Pretty self-explanatory. We're going to head straight into this. First up, we have Chicken Little. Now, I don't exactly want to give birth to this movie, but mm, it's like Metal Grand. I think it's... Mm, let's just put it in Grand. It's for the girlies with the daddy issues. There you go, that's your therapy, that movie right there. Next up we have Jennifer Lopez's Half Time. Now you know what, I really enjoyed this. I kind of want to put it in Grand, but then I see her ego, like that Twitter video that went viral where she's like, do you know who I am? And then the man's like, who? I don't know you. Jennifer Lopez. Who's Jennifer Lopez? Me. So because of that, I might put it in meh. Like, I guess it's no standout movie. It's, it's an interesting documentary about Jennifer Lopez's halftime show. So I'll put it in meh. It, it wasn't the most amazing movie in the world. Like, I'm not really gonna rewatch it, but it didn't insult me. Oh, we have Team Beach 2. Mm. This is gonna go in the was this necessary category because I understand why they did what they did, but we didn't even need a second movie in the first place. That is straight in was this necessary because it was not necessary. I know that's up for debate, but in my eyes, we did not need that second movie. No one was asking for it. I was very happy with the, just the first one. Oh, Whiplash. Mm hmm. I feel like I sound so pretentious right now putting that movie and I want to give birth to this movie, but that was like the easiest decision of my life. I love that movie so much. You should check out mine and the Hit List podcast episode on it. It will be up on Spotify whenever it is available. I'll put a link for it in the description of this video. We discussed Whiplash and everything about it. But that movie, oh, it's too good. It's so good. It's like the best thing I've ever seen. I can rewatch this movie so many times. I just love it. I love the acting. Miles Teller. It's just too good. I think if you need to watch a movie and you don't know what to watch and you somehow haven't watched Whiplash, I'd highly recommend. You don't even have to be a drummer to like it. It obviously helps, but you don't need to. Now we have, oh, Penelope. Um, mm, see, I love it. Mm, it's, it's hard. Do I put it in which one? Which one does it go into? Mm, it's like a childhood favourite and I still love it. Ah. Uh, mm. Oh my god, I don't know which one to do. I feel like I'm on The Voice right now and I have to choose a coach. Oh no, okay. Um, We'll put it in grand for now. I can always move it later. It is a great movie. Highly recommend. I feel like it's really underrated. It's got James McAvoy. How do you go wrong? And Christina Ricci. You can't go wrong with those two. Oh, Kung Fu Panda. This could be controversial. Mm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna... Mm, it's, it's between these two. Honestly, okay, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to put it in meh. Please don't shout at me. Because it's not one that I go to rewatch. It's not one that I'm craving to ever watch again. So it's going to go in meh. It wasn't awful. It wasn't the best. It happened. And now it is in meh. But if you're a fairy, you might love it. So that's good for you. Okay, now we have the Lord of the Rings. I think that's the, this is the first one. It will go in grand. I really enjoyed it and it's definitely not meh that would actually be insulting i'm not dumb it lived up to the hype which was good because that's such a hyped movie it had to be good and i'm so glad it actually was i was so concerned when i watched it and um great movie everyone in it really good oh my god aragon yeah what a guy okay next up oh my god why can't i see what that movie is oh this is shazam i love how the images sort of uploaded shazam it felt longer than it had to be if i'm being honest i feel like it's a bit overrated 
it's gonna go in meh. It wasn't awful. I didn't question my existence. It was just meh. Next up, Top Gun Maverick. I'd never seen the first one, but my parents had, and I think upon watching, we all they agreed that this was basically like the first one, but just remade into this time. So I'm gonna say, mm, it was a good movie, but it wasn't great, you know? I, mm, it's between these two. I'll put it in grand, just because I enjoyed it. I had a good time. And again, Miles Teller, oh my God, a pattern. It didn't require too much of my attention to understand what's going on. And I really appreciate that sometimes because sometimes I don't want to feel like I'm reading an essay. I enjoyed the arc we had with the characters in that movie. It was like enemies to lovers, but make it friends. Okay, next up we have Purple Hearts. <laughs> mm. Mm. It'll go in meh. I feel like that's all I want to say about that one. It just, it's meh. And I think that would be a lot of people who agree with me. I'm not in the minority there. It's not a bad movie. I'm not craving to rewatch it. Sophia Carson can sing. Other guy can act. Bravo. Oh, this one's so easy. <laughs> Angel Fool's Christmas? Give me back those minutes. I didn't even make it into the first hour of this movie, it was that bad. I went into it thinking, oh, Chad Michael Murray, I can get through this for him. Mm-mm. No, that was my mistake. It was that bad. Within like the first 10 minutes, the main actress looked directly into the camera. I made it to the first half hour. There was no saving grace. It was just giving nothing nor even Chad Michael Murray could save that, and that's saying a lot if he can't save a movie. And I actually saw other people say the same thing, so I'm glad there's a general consensus, and I don't feel like a failure. Like, everyone agreed Chad Michael Murray could not save that movie, which is really sad. I was rooting for him. I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! Oh my god, a classic Radio Rebel. It's gotta go in grand. <laughs> it's just... It's too good. Radio Rebel is a classic. If you grew up with it, you just have to put it in grand. It's just, it gives me serotonin. I love the, you know, it's historical. She made history. <laughs> and I sat down with the president of Disney Channel and I said, I want to make history. And that's what this is. If you haven't seen Radio Rebel, you haven't lived. That's my take. Oh, Descendants? Hmm. Oh, I mean, it's definitely grand. Descendants is definitely Grant. I every single song is a bop. No flops here. That's definitely one of the better Disney Channel movies to come out recently. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It's gonna go in Grant. Not I want to give birth. That might come later, but Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. What a classic. What an amazing movie. I'm so glad I finally watched it this year. Some of these movies that I'm ranking, majority of them will be up on my channel with my reactions and commentaries available for you to see. Some of the others, obviously, I just watched on my own. But Harry Potter, the entire series is up there, and I love this movie. It's so good, and the little child actors somehow managed to pull through and do it. Couldn't be me, but happy for them. The Harry Potter movies are really magical, and I love them for that. I was literally listening to the soundtrack earlier. Scary movie. Uh, okay, let's not lie. I'm going to put it in Was This Necessary, because for me, yes, it's funny, but it's not my kind of humour, and it was just a bit gross to me. Also, I just want to say, if all of this is not correlating with my letterbox scores, shush, go away. You didn't hear this from me. But if you want to check me out on Letterbox, it is at Rebecca Rose with an X over the first E, just like my Instagram. You can follow me on there. I love to rate my movies. You can see what I think. And then you can watch this tier ranking video and say, oh my god, she's a liar, because maybe I am, but... I don't know. Once you let these movies marinate for a while, you kind of realise, mm, maybe it wasn't what I thought it was originally. Descendants 3. You know what? Hmm. It's between these two again. I feel like I needed to have like a middle ground ranking, but I didn't, so we're too far in anyway now. I'm gonna put Descendants 3 in... Uh, we're being grand. I feel like the Descendants trilogy is just so strong, and 3 got a lot of hate, but I really enjoyed it. I don't actually know why people didn't like it as much. I know the songs aren't as strong, 
but I still like the storyline. And it's better than Teen Beach 2, I'll tell you that much. Okay, Rocky Horror Picture Show? Grand. I feel like so many of these movies are going into grand. Girlie should have had another category. This is iconic. I really get why it's a cult classic and I loved everything that it was and stood for. And this is definitely a rewatchable movie. Basically all of these are rewatchable. I, Tonya. Oh my god, this might be controversial. I know loads of people love it. And I'm, I, I'm still thinking I needed another category because this feels harsh to put it in meh. But I'm... It's, it was good. Oh god, okay. Mm. Mm, I'll put it in meh for now. I think for me it just felt like it dragged just a tiny bit. I feel like there were some pacing moments, but I don't know. This might be one that we marinate for the rest of the video and I see what I think about it later. Like maybe when everything's put together. But I don't know, I, Tonya, it was good. It definitely wasn't bad. And now I gave it like four stars on IMDb, not IMDb, on Letterboxd. I'm gonna leave it there for now. But the acting was phenomenal. It's got Sebastian Stan and Margot Robbie and I love both of them. Okay, we'll move on. The Black Phone, mm, this is gonna be meh for me. Mainly because I am not someone that likes when you see like ghost children. And that really takes me out of anything that's horror-y. It just didn't hit for me, The Black Phone. I didn't think it was that scary. It was an okay movie. It had good plot points. I mean, the last half hour had me on the edge. Scream 3. Ah, it's gonna have to go on meh because it's not my favourite Scream. I have to do that because it's not my favourite Scream and it hurts me because I love the Scream franchise so much. Sadly, almost all of my Scream reactions were taken off of YouTube. I've only got like a couple up. They are available on my Patreon, which sounds like such a plug and it, I guess it is. I just love the Scream movies. Oh, literally. My phone case is Scream. Oh, the original Scream? Mm, it has to be I Want to Give Birth because actually... It might have to be down to Grant, only because we'll get to the other ones later and I'll just say which one's my absolute favourite. But Scream, I just, it really brought me into loving horror. As soon as I saw Scream, I've loved horror ever since and I've been obsessed with the Scream movies and I can't wait for the next one. I haven't even seen the trailer for 6. I guess Scream 2 technically, but I call it Scream 6. I'm so excited, I can't wait. I'm going to watch it on YouTube with you guys, but I haven't seen a single trailer and I can't wait. I love Jenna Ortega. And I'm so excited to see what they're doing with it. And it's in New York. And oh my god. But Scream, the original, is iconic. It's a classic. And if you're not a fan of horror, maybe give it a go. You might enjoy it. Especially if you like murder mysteries. I like because Scream don't seem so dumb with their murder mysteries. And I love how Ghostface is sloppy in these movies. He's not some god that can't be touched. Ghostface is sloppy. Whoever the Ghostface is, they fall over. They trip up. They slip on blood. And I enjoy seeing that. I don't want to see some sort of Terminator running down the hall at me. I want to see a real person. And I appreciate that they do that. So this is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I feel like all of them are basically grand to me. That one, I couldn't really tell you what's going on in it. It feels like such a blur. All of the Harry Potter movies feel like a blur to me. Like they happened. I watched them. I loved them. Okay, next up, Never Been Kissed. There were so many issues in this movie, so many. I did a move. I did a reaction called "I watched Dylan O'Brien's favorite movies," and this was one of them. And now I'm calling the police. I'm kidding, but am I? This movie was questionable in one too many ways. There's some very just weird tropes, if you can call them that. I don't want to spoil the movie, but I don't really want you to watch it either. Like, we have a student-teacher kind of romance. You'll see if you watch it. I don't recommend it, but it's it's questionable. It deserves to be arrested. It's Endgame! Okay, it's gonna go on grand. We love Call Me Basic. I loved the whole Avengers. I love Marvel. Not the biggest fan of the newest phase. It has its issues, but Endgame was iconic. That was a cinema experience. I just love the way they wrapped up like the first couple phases. I think it was done very well. Kung Fu Panda 2? I'm sorry, the Kung Fu Panda movies are just going in meh for me. I'm so sorry Angelina, I know she loves these movies. I feel like I'm sinning right now. Oh, the Batman. It's just, it's gotta be there because Robert Pattinson, I, I really love the movie The Batman. I do not normally care for Batman, but this movie made me care about Batman. Maybe I'm a bit biased because it's Robert Pattinson, but I think it was really good. Oh, Teen Beach movie. 
Honestly, do I want to give birth to this? Maybe I do. I think it's going to go all the way up there. <laughs> oh, can't call me pretentious when we've got Teen Beach Movie up at the I Want to Give Birth tier. That movie held such a special place in my heart. I'm also a really big Ross Lynch fan and the Driver Era fan. I've grown up watching him since Austin and Ali and I've been a fan of the band R5 and then the Driver Era and anything he ever did. So, special place in my heart. I think it's just such a cute movie. It's really easy to watch and enjoyable and the songs slap. Not a single flop. They went in their prime with that. I love as well how I'm wearing this. It just really worked out. Next up we have The Simple Favour. Okay. Hmm. This one's debatable. I'm gonna put it in meh. I enjoyed it, but it felt like there was just too much happening at some points so that I couldn't keep up. Now, maybe you can just call me slow. Maybe that's all it is, but I found it hard to keep up and I think there was just too much going on and it all seemed to happen near like the last half hour. Also, there's a certain trope in this that I'm not a fan of and I don't wanna say it because it'll spoil it. But they definitely did that and I'm not a fan of that trope. Ella Enchanted. <laughs> it was cute. I really enjoyed the prints in this. But I think it's going to go in meh. I'm sorry. I think maybe because it was overhyped to me. Like it was really sold to me as this amazing movie. And it was really cute. It was enjoyable. It has great musical moments. But it definitely shows its age. And I can't just give a movie a grand rating because of a man. Yes, I'm kind of looking at Batman right now, but I enjoyed that movie a lot and I rewatched it many times. I've not rewatched Edda Enchanted since I did a video on it. You need to use a VPN to do a video on it. That would have been such a great VPN plug, but I don't have a sponsor. Hey Surfshark, I'm, I'm here. Smile, ooh. Okay, you know what? This will go in grand, which really surprised me because as I watched it, I didn't... I wasn't that impressed. And then the closer it got to the end, like I enjoyed the acting in it and I, I really liked the story that it was telling, but when it was getting closer to the end and I thought it was ending a particular way, I wasn't happy. But when it ended another way, I'm really trying not to spoil these. When it ended another way, I was like, oh, okay. I really enjoyed this movie and I wish I could talk more about it. Maybe I'll do a video on it one day for Halloween next year, but I think it was a great movie. And I know that's not the popular opinion, I don't think. I don't think a lot of people enjoyed it that much, but I really liked the story. Because I think sometimes horror movies lack that story and I, it didn't rely on gore, which I really appreciated, and body horror and all that. It actually told a story and it was very interesting. And it's more about how just because something's happening in your head, it doesn't mean that it's not real, at least to you. It, it's still an experience that you're having, so it's real regardless of what other people are saying. And I think that's a really nice message that the movie gave. Clueless. Mm. Mm. All right, I'm gonna be controversial. Yes, going in there. I feel like I'm upsetting so many people in this video. Clueless is going in there. I, I love it for what it is. And I love it for the actors and Paul Rudd, but it's like a stepsister, stepbrother romance and that doesn't sit in my stomach right black panther wakanda forever copy grand that actually really surprised me this year especially because marvel's kind of been on a decline recently but wakanda forever they came back to save marvel that was a great movie it really was unexpected for me to love it as much as i did and i'm really looking for an excuse to rewatch it with someone at the minimum so i'm waiting for my chance but it's there for now and yeah i i think it was a really beautiful tribute to chadwick and they handled his death very well. I'm so glad they did not try to CGI him because that would have made me mad. Like, let's just let the dead stay dead. Let them rest in peace. Crush. Ooh, this has got to be grand. I really enjoyed that movie. It was nice to see a lesbian bisexual movie where they didn't rely on it just being, like, traumatic. They were like, oh, gays can have fun, which is really refreshing to see, which is sad to say it's refreshing to see, but we see it way too often where all these gay, queer, LGBTQ plus movies revolve around coming out, traumatising events, or being bullied. It's like, let the gays have fun, and Crush is that, it let the gays have fun. Next up is Barbarian. And I'm gonna have to say, was this necessary? First 40 minutes, impeccable. I was on the edge of my seat. But once we got past those 40 minutes, I was literally questioning what I was watching and why I was watching it and why someone decided that this was the movie they wanted to make. Uh, Barbarian was not it for me. 
it was a miss, it was a flop, it was not a bop. It would be maybe in the give me back those hours category had it not been for the first 40 minutes. I, I, it's hard to talk about these movies because I don't want to spoil it for anyone. So Barbarian is in Was This Necessary? But I feel like any woman would agree after they see the first 40 minutes that that was more of a horror than the last section of the movie. Beast is also Was This Necessary? Just, it's a movie where basically everyone was dumb. There were so many stupid choices and you wouldn't realistically make those choices. So it was not necessary. They could have saved themselves so much if they just didn't. (laughs) Don't worry, darling. That's a meh movie. It wasn't as bad as people were saying. Like, I thought it was kind of creepy. Our Father was a documentary about, I think, this surgeon who had a bunch of kids with women who wanted surrogate or they needed like sperm donors i think i'll put it in meh it feels mean to put anything that's a documentary in meh oh (laughs) it just felt a bit long this documentary okay my mind and me oh we're like in our documentary era right now my mind and me grand i loved every single minute of it i've been a selena gomez fan since like 2000 seven since the day i was born i'm kidding i wasn't born in 2007 but i've been a fan since like day one because i grew up with her on wizards of waverly place and then selena gomez in the scene and then just selena gomez and i saw her live and i met her and it was just it's been a whole spiral as a long selena gomez supporter it was lovely to watch this movie and see how she's felt over these years it was just so interesting to see someone in the spotlight talk about mental health and her experience with it in the spotlight and i would love if they just release like the three hour version there was a three hour cut where is it don't be shy. Release it. I want to see it. Oh my god, Falling for Christmas. Yeah. Alright, it's like between these three. If it wasn't for me, oh my god, the Christmas movies just aren't winning this year. If it wasn't for the fact that I was building some Ikea furniture whilst watching this, I probably would have said give me the back those hours or I wouldn't have even finished the movie. Oh, Bullet Train. That was grand. It was such an unexpected good movie, but I really enjoyed it and it was really funny in a way that wasn't trying hard. And it was nice to see Aaron Taylor Johnson back in the scene. I feel like Mandy disappeared for years, but it's so nice to see him back. And Logan Lerman, he was in there out of nowhere for me and I was so shook to see him. I was surprised it was quite a star-studded cast. I just really enjoyed it. It was a great two hours. It was a great, we watched it on Christmas day and it was very enjoyable. Nope. You know, originally I would have probably put it in Met or even Was This Necessary, but it's marinated and it's now grand. Like, it really did grow on me. I remember watching it originally first and I was like, eh, don't like this. What was the point? Why did they do this? It's so drawn out. But then I finally thought about it a bit longer and realised I actually really loved that movie. Like, I totally understood what it was about, the spectacle. It takes a while, I think, for some people to really appreciate it and I'm one of those people. Now I really appreciate it and I've watched it about three or four times and Jordan Peele really is a great mind. Once you realise what the movie's about and the message behind it and spectacle and how we treat others and creatures and things that we don't understand, it's amazing. And I think he really did execute it so well. Also, I remember when I was in the cinema and I was watching the whole monkey scene, I was on the edge and I jumped. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a horror, but I get that the message behind it is like the horror part because the horror is the people really in this but anyway knives out it's controversial is it meh or it's a grand i'm gonna say meh well i don't know now i'm debating is it grand or is it meh but my commentary is up on it i probably said i loved it i probably did in the moment but when i look back i'm like i don't really i'm not itching to watch this although it's got jamie lee curtis and i feel like for that reason i should put it in grand mm it's debatable i'm just trying to like rewatch it in my mind right now and see what i think i'll put it in grand out of peer pressure from myself just because of jamie lee curtis and chris evans and anna de arms okay it's in grand there you go rival there you go old man i think that's harry potter and the deathly hallows part two either way part one somewhere up there but we're gonna say this is part two. I'm gonna put this in grand because I loved it. I really loved the Harry Potter movies and Deathly Hallows part two had me screaming, shaking, crying. My reaction of it is up, all of them are. And I just, it was so good. Okay, next up we got Alfred and the Chipmunks. 
I really just want to put it in was this necessary because it's just funny. But I'll put it in meh. If I was like 12, I'd say I want to give birth to this movie, but I'm not. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Now, let me try and remember that movie, regardless it's in grand. Oh, that was with the whole, like, Tom Riddle, wasn't it? Was it not? And then we see, like, Ginny acting weird, and there's all the poetry on the walls, and Tom Riddle rhymes. A Quiet Place? Grand. They couldn't go wrong with those movies. They are so good, those movies. Oh, Descendants 2, I've been waiting for this one to pop up. Honestly, I want to give birth to this movie. I'm going to go look at the Disney Channel movies winning. Descendants 2 was so good. The songs, bops. The premise, bops. Dove Cameron, bop. It's just too good. Oh, here we go. The Killing of a Sacred Deer. This is either or, honestly. I feel like I made the category, was this necessary, just for this movie, The Killing of a Sacred Deer. But I also want my hours back. (sighs) Just because the movie haunted me for days after, I'm gonna put it in was this necessary and not give me back those hours the killing of a sacred deer just feels like it's trying way too hard and that it feels like it's really pretentious i didn't get a thing really about what it was trying to do or say and the things that i did pick up i feel like they didn't need to go about it like that and it just felt really weird just to be weird without reason it's got such rave reviews but i feel like it was such a pretentious movie that really let me down this year I expected more from it, and I just thought it was going to be way better, but I was left really disappointed, upset, and traumatised. I don't think I've seen a more pretentious movie than A Killing of a Sacred Deer ever in my life. But the one thing that is good about it that I will say is that it left a lasting impression for days and even now, and it's not because I hated it, it's because of something that happened in the movie that left a lasting impression. But again, it felt like everything that happened in the movie just happened to be, like, weird, but with an outer reason. (gasps) Ma! (laughs) It's gonna have to go in meh. It was a fun movie. It was fun for the girlies. I think it's funny. It's not taking itself too seriously. Yeah. (laughs) Ma happened. Zombies, I guess also meh. It was fun. The girlies laughed. We cried. We sung. We danced. But it's not a Descendants level kind of movie. It's definitely got to be a tier below. This is finally Goblet of Fire. She does have favouritism for Robert Pattinson. It is showing. I'm not even sorry for it. Goblet of Fire is an amazing movie. I would give birth to that movie if I could. United 93 is a movie about 9-11. I really recommend the movie. Apparently some of the actors in it were people that were actually in like the control rooms of the aeroplanes and things that day. So that was interesting. No wonder it had more of a documentary feel than a movie feel. And I loved that even though there was like some bigger actors in it none of them overshadowed the fact that this was a 9-11 movie and that's what it should be taken as like they weren't the biggest part about the movie like just because they're in it it's not why you're watching i couldn't care less that they were in it when i was watching it hotel for dogs it's gonna have to go in grand it holds a special place in my heart again it's a childhood movie i love the concept it made me want to have a hotel for dogs when i was younger It's Scream 2. This is the one I would love to give birth to if I could. Scream 2 is such an iconic movie. It's my favourite in the series. I have watched this one about three or four times now and I'm willing to watch it way more and I just want to share it with everyone. My phone case references Scream 2. I think Scream 2 is their best Scream movie. Your opinions are valid. I love every single Scream movie so I'm not going to be mad if you say another one is your favourite or that you think is better than Scream 2. I'm not mad. I love Scream. Scream 2, I want to give birth to. And I'm so sad that my video on it was taken down. But anyway, (laughs) we move. Ooh, Murder on the Orient Express. Easy, give me back those hours. And I was following along. I was like, yeah, this has potential. I want to know who did it. And then you get to the end, and I'm not spoiling it, but the equivalent representation of the ending is, and it was all a dream. It gave me those vibes, and that's not good. And for some reason, I must be like a masochist, because I want to watch Death on the Nile now. And I think they're like connected oh but thank you lord for giving us a blessing scream 4 i love scream 4 i mean obviously it has gone grand any scream movie does oh so sorry 3 but scream 4 was great i just i loved it every single scream movie i love need i say more the lizzie mcguire movie is meh sorry not sorry it is what it is harry potter and the deathly hallows part 1 i almost want to say was this necessary because of a certain character death But I absolutely loved it, so it has to go in grand. It broke my heart, but in the best way. Okay, Lilo and Stitch, Stitch is a glitch. Also want to say almost is this necessary because that was painful. 
but it's also grand. So these two are very similar, different movies completely, but very similar in feelings. So this is Prisoner of Azkaban. This one confused me, but was great. We'll put it there. Uncharted. You know what? Mm. I'm gonna just put it in meh because I enjoyed it, but there's not really like so much to it for me. I've seen it twice and I liked it both times, but like Tom Holland, is, if it wasn't for Tom Holland, I don't think I would have enjoyed it as much. Oh my god, a Captain America the Winter Soldier, I have to put it up there. Because I've just loved that since I was like 12. That movie has another special place in my heart. All of them at the top do. The Winter Soldier just gives me that warm feeling on the inside. And I don't know if I'm a psychopath for saying that, but it does. I love Chris Hemsworth. Oh. <laughs> I love Chris Evans and Sebastian Stan. And I love the friendship of Bucky and Steve. Next up we have I Came By. <sighs> I'm going to put it in meh. It's a good Netflix movie. It's one of the better ones that they've released weekly or whatever that they were planning to do this year. It definitely reminded me of an old movie that starred, um, who was it? The man in Robert Sheehan. It was definitely inspired by that movie of Robert Sheehan. And for that, it's going to go in meh because it kind of reminds me of a remake. Okay, Fear Street 1666. Meh. For me, 1666 was, I think, my least favourite in the franchise. I might be remembering this wrong, but I think it was my least favourite. I just, it didn't hit for me as hard as the other two. Although I enjoyed, mm, hmm. No, I think 1666 was a bit slower. Maybe because it was old timey. Although didn't I like it because of that? Like it, it surprised me. Okay, I'm going to move it to grand for now because I think... I think the first one was the one that was slower for me, but we'll get to that. So 1666 crawled its way to number two. Congratulations. We move. The Hating Game. Oh, give me back those hours. I never read the book. I have no prior knowledge of this whole book to movie thing. Um, all I know is that he kept calling a shortcake and it made me want to throw up every single time. Oh, Disenchanted. I guess it has to go in meh. It was okay. It didn't insult me for existing. It's probably one of the better... Be, better? <laughs> She's hungry. Probably one of the better sequels to come out for a movie that came out so long ago. And it didn't make me hate the original or wish that they never made a sequel. So I don't hate it. And I'd watch it again. Sure, the songs don't slap. Nowhere near as hard as the original. But I kind of knew that going into it. So I think none of my expectations were hurt in this movie, if we can say that. Anastasia? Oh, grand. The villain song in it? Oh, what's it called? At the end of tonight. Da -da 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 -da. The villain song. If I could inject that song into my veins, I would. Sound of Metal. Sadly, it's going to be meh. I really enjoyed what they were doing and what they were trying to tell, but some of it felt slow to me and I expected it to show more of something else and it did. I thought they'd spend more time with him in the band like get realistically it can't but I really liked the aspect they were going for like the whole um not the aspect but the message about being deaf doesn't have to be a bad thing that you need to fix. Atlantis the Lost Empire hmm I will say grand Milo what a guy um great movie by Panic at its finest it's a underrated Disney treasure. Deserves more attention. Okay, next up we have C for me. Give me back those hours. That was a movie about a blind girl who goes to house sit, but then things go astray when some people turn up wanting to rob the place or something. It has a good concept, but it just was not executed well, and I didn't really care for the protagonist. She just complained one too many times, and that can only happen so much before you're annoyed at them. And you don't want people being annoyed at your protagonist. Multiverse of Madness I've defended so many times, and I've even done it on my channel, but it, I have to put it in there. Like, yes, I said it's not as bad as people are saying and people are being harsh, and I still believe that, but it is meh. It's definitely not peak Marvel, not even peak cinema. 
it exists and they could have done it so much better and they called it the first marvel horror movie but it wasn't really a horror it felt like a parody of a horror we have fear street 1994 i believe i think this one this one was the meh one this was the one that i actually thought was the slowest the first one but regardless i really enjoyed the trilogy okay next up we have oh god what harry potter movie is that that is harry potter and the half-blood prince sadly as much as i enjoyed the movie and as much as the movie does kind of revolve around my favorite boy Zee snape my favorite emo boy i'm still gonna put it in meh because the lead up to the end of the movie the reveal kind of thing felt slow to me and even whilst i watched it i said it zombies 2 we have zombies 2 i sadly never got to upload this on my channel because they took it down before it could ever be uploaded they never let me upload it it was always copyright claimed fully blocked so it can't exist it is on my patreon if you want to see it um zombies 2 hmm mm. it was better than zombies 1 i think but then i don't think the songs slapped as hard so i'm also going to put it in meh so zombies exist in the meh category so far i'm still yet to see the third one and i might still try to watch it for youtube but we'll see scary movie 2 i'm sorry give me back those hours that was so gross i didn't enjoy it i laughed out of peer pressure <laughs> the guardians of the galaxy christmas special it was meh i would almost put it in was this necessary but it was fun for what it was for a christmas special and i think it was kind of sweet to have a christmas special and i really did like it for that the good nurse also a meh netflix movie that came out recently um eddie redmayne and jessica chastain are in it they're both phenomenal actors and they really do pull through with this movie with their acting that would almost give it a grand rating because of their acting but i can't put it there just because of that because i didn't really enjoy the movie all that much driving home to you mm, it's gonna go in grand i really it's a cute little concert movie it's so adorable and i watched it after i saw olivia rodrigo live in london on her last concert day of the tour it definitely helped my pcd post-concert depression i would watch again the performances in the movie are great they sound amazing of course she does and it was just interesting to see like her studio sessions so i really appreciated that fear street 1978 is it i think it is either way this is a grand movie to me it helps that Sadie Sink was in the movie. So that's why I was really excited to watch it because I think Sadie Sink's an amazing actress. But um, 1978 is a great movie. I could be butchering the number. It might be 1974 or something. Regardless, it was so good. I really enjoyed that. That's my favourite Fear Street movie that they've done. It was phenomenal. I love the story they told in it. And I think it was done so well. Oh, now we have Turning Red. Oh, Turning Red's so cute. It has to go in grand. It's grown on me as the months have gone past. I just think it's such a cozy Disney movie and it's so cute and I love that there's a movie about like girls going through puberty and girls fangirling over boy bands because it happens. It's not cringy, it happens, it's adorable, it's so pure and I love the movie. I would watch it again and I would recommend. For Love and Thunder, honestly, it's not grand, it has to be in meh. It wasn't the worst thing to come out of recent Marvel but it was just, there were one too many jokes in it. It was borderline every 10 seconds there was a joke and it got really tiring really quick. Minus that, I didn't think it was too bad of a movie. I really enjoyed what they were trying to do with it. I was a bit upset that it had so much potential that it didn't reach and it felt like it was just a parody of Thor. Oh, Behind the Try. I watched this after all the drama happened with Ned. Um, I'll put it in. <laughs> it feels weird putting Behind the Try in Grand. I did enjoy it though. I don't really remember it, but it was about their tour. I'm gonna to put it in meh though, because it doesn't stand out to me. But I know it was an enjoyable watch and I like to see behind the scenes of YouTubers and how they do such grand scale things and good for them, honestly. Next up we have, what is this? Oh, this is no exit. Honestly, grand. It was so much better than I expected. I went into it expecting trash, but then I watched it and, uh. A girlie loves a good thriller, and it was a thriller, okay? There were twists and turns that I did not expect. No Exit deserves better. It gets a lot of hate in the reviews, but it hit the spots for me. I loved No Exit, and I would watch again, and I have recommended it to people that I know, and I'm excited to see what other people think of it. That one was an unexpected gem for me. It's basically about, look, let's give you a little concept here. 
it's a great premise. It's about a girl, a snowstorm, she has to get to her mum. So she goes out in the storm, gets stuck somewhere, and the place she gets stuck in the car park, she realises that there's a girl trapped in a van, and she is trying to find out who in this building that they're all stuck in for the night, which one of these passerbyers is the kidnapper of the girl in the van. Oh my god, okay, not okay. Not okay, this has to go up in the I want to give birth to this movie. This, I didn't think it'd actually be as good as it was. I had so many people talk so many good things about it, and then I saw it and I got the hype. I want to give birth to this movie, it was made for not okay. Not okay is everything to me. I want to watch it again. I want an excuse to watch it again. And I'm probably going to watch it again as straight as I get into the new year. Because I have not had enough of this movie. I want to inject it into my veins. It's just you watch the main character sometimes that Zoe plays and you cringe. Because you're like, why would you say this in this situation? She truly is tone deaf and very reminiscent and reflective of some influences these days. I want to make a commentary on Not Okay because it's definitely one of my favourite movies I've seen this year. Definitely in my top ten. Do Revenge, grand. That was a crazy movie. What a whirlwind of a movie. I didn't think a Netflix movie could be that good. And it was. Violent Night? It was going meh. It was unnecessarily violent, I would say. Um, I'm surprised it's a 15 for the violence they show. Because I'm not really someone that's disgusted by things that easily. But for me... Violent Night really did push the boundaries of what is too much. But I love David Harbour. So for him, I watched it and it was worth it for him. Black Adam, it's gonna go in meh. It's definitely one of the better DC movies to come out recently for me. I don't really have much to say about it. I posted a review of it on my Instagram. I don't really, I, yeah, my thoughts are there. It was, it didn't disappoint me. I saw it, I enjoyed it. DC I, are a very slippy slope. I don't think I have high expectations of them, so anything that's not bad is good to me. Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Grand. Aragorn's in it, so it's grand. Don't really remember a thing. It feels like two years ago that I watched it, but it was only like a month ago. I'll see if I can get it up on YouTube for you guys to see my reaction. But if not, it's on my Patreon. <gasps> the Invitation. Sadly. I really want to put it in grand, but I'd just be lying to myself. It's meh. It's the one time, like, it's so annoying. It's, they finally made a vampire movie where the vampires are bad, but I kind of wish they just stuck with it as a romance because the two main characters in it have such great chemistry that I, I really was rooting for them. It's such a shame, though, because they finally did what everyone was asking to make vampires bad again, and they did that. But then I was like, I don't want it. When I saw it, I, I didn't want it. So I don't know, they just couldn't win, could they? But the Irish Happier Than Ever? Grand. The version of Therefore I Am In There, I wish they would release it on Spotify immediately. Because with the string quartet, ooh, that song hits even harder than it does with the original like, composition. Much potential there. I wish they would release, please? Please release all of the versions of the songs from Happier Than Ever onto Spotify. Please, I'm begging. Especially Therefore I Am. If nothing else, add Therefore I Am. Girl in the Picture. It feels weird rating a documentary grand. Especially one as dark as that. But it was a really interesting watch and it was really sad and really dark. But they told a story and it was someone else's story. But, but I did not enjoy it, but it was watchable and... For a documentary about something that dark, it, they did the pacing well and it was good. And I just feel weird talking about documentaries. Okay, we're moving on. Final Destination, I'm so sorry, give me back those hours. I actually filmed a reaction to this ages ago and I still have like the files for it. But I completely capped it and never uploaded it because I just really was disappointed in this movie and it really bored me. I think it was just way too silly and unrealistic, like the things that happened to the characters. I just couldn't get on board with it. Ha ha ha. Like they didn't get on board the plane. Ha ha ha. Mm hmm. Okay, now we've got the final couple of movies. So I think this was called. This one's called Nobody. Honestly, was this necessary? I think it was just like action sequence after action sequence and couldn't tell you much about the movie. I know I didn't enjoy it that much whilst I watched it. It just felt like one of those movies made for men that has no substance. It's just punch after punch and not even in an enjoyable way. X? 
This could be controversial. It's going in meh. It was okay, but it didn't hit for me. And I know I've said that about plenty of these movies, but it didn't hit clearly as to why it's in meh. Which is sad. I had so much hope for it. Mia Goth is amazing, though. And I did love the whole thing about her acting as two parts in that movie, which is very iconic. And Jenna Ortega's in it. Oh, I wanted more for it. Hercules is grand. Megara, is that her name? Look at me remembering her name. Megara. Still love her, still in love with her, will never get over her. Her song, I Won't Say I'm In Love, inject it immediately. I want that all over me because it's too good. Disney really popped off with that song. Coco, duh. I want to give birth to this movie. If you don't love Coco that much, then are you okay? Uh, do you have a heart? The heart in that movie, the story of it, the... Ah, it's just so warm and cosy and heartfelt. And if you don't cry, go seek therapy. It's such an emotional movie and I just love it so much. I feel like it's so underrated in some ways. Also the songs. Remember Me. What a song. Didn't it win an Oscar for Remember Me? I hope it did. It deserves an Oscar for Remember Me. They made a song. I have so many different meanings. But the same song in the movie. Oh my, like, their minds. Scream 5. I'm tempted to say I want to give birth to this movie. I'm going to put it in grand. But I also am tempted to be like, I want to give birth to it. Also, whilst we're here, I'm going to sadly move Chicken Little down to meh. Or do, or do I mean that? I mean, it was a quick movie and I think it felt long. Oh my god, I feel like I've done a sin. I'm so sorry, Chicken Little. I related to the daddy issues, but that's, that's about it. But where were we? Where were we? Scream 5. It's so tempting to put it up there, but I just... Is it a Scream 2 to me? No, but it's a great movie. Ah, that's so difficult. I'm gonna leave it in grand for now. Okay, it's staying in there. Okay, next up we have Spy- I am not a pretentious fart at all because Spider-Man No Way Home is gonna go straight into I want to give birth to this movie. I just rewatched it the other day. I've seen it about five times this year. Um, I think as well that my cinema experience that I had with it was amazing. And the whole build up to No Way Home with Andrew Garfield completely denying any involvement in it, the leaked picture, the promo for the movie, the hype around the movie, and then I met Charlie Cox before the movie came out. No Way Home just delivered on everything that I ever wanted for a movie and more. And I was just so shocked that they pulled off what they pulled off. It's definitely one of my favourite Spider-Man movies ever. I will continue to always love it and continue to watch it. Lilo and Stitch, I'm gonna have to say I wanna give birth to this movie as well. It's just, again, a childhood classic that I grew up with and I've been obsessed with Stitch ever since I can remember. I love that movie so much. Ohana, oh, what a sweet movie. It's a Disney classic. People love Stitch for a reason. If you haven't seen it, what are you doing? Go watch it. It's so cute, so adorable. Finally, we're on our last movie, Fresh. This is a really recent watch. And I'm tempted to put it in grand or I want to give birth to this movie which is really unexpected for me. But I think I'm gonna leave it up at that I want to give birth to this movie, <laughs> which is shocking to me. It was so refreshing to see smart characters in a movie. The main girlie wasn't dumb and I really appreciated her for it. Again, Sebastian Stan, icon. Also, spoiler, if you don't want like any single spoiler for the movie, this isn't even a big spoiler. This spoiler has nothing to do with the plot, the ending or what happened in the movie. It's just a really cool thing they did. But still, if you're someone that likes going completely blind and skip like 20 seconds, I don't know. I just loved how in this movie, the title sequence, the title card played at about half an hour in. It was just so fresh. Haha. <laughs> it was a new thing that I've never seen anyone else do before. And from that moment onwards, the entire tone of the movie changed. It won for me. It was... I'd heard great things about Fresh and it delivered and smart characters, really cool plot great actors had me on the edge of my seat i was rooting for the main girly so there we go that's my ranking of the 100 movies that i watched this year honestly it wasn't too bad was it this year for movies because we've only got what like 10 around the bottom here out of 100 that's not too bad i didn't do too shabby these movies didn't disappoint i love watching movies i'll continue to watch more if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up and maybe i'll make this a yearly occurrence where we rate all the movies that i watched every single year but for now 
there you go. We just ranked every single movie I watched this year. Let me know what you think of these movies. How would you rank them? I'll even leave the link down below so you can rank these movies yourself if you want to with this tier template. But for now, I'm a go. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched all the way, comment down this emoji and we'll have a little chit chat in the comments. Okay, happy new year by the way. Hope your next year gives you everything you want and more. And I'll see you next year. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Bye.